Hello and welcome to this new feature on Chini Vision where I stand at a picturesque location and answer your technical questions with your 8 and 16 bits and try and help you out and answer some of those queries. Um, it's the day after the cliff fall down in Bude and I'm standing down here on the beach just outside the town. There's two satellite trucks up there, one from TSW or as the young people call it West Country and the other one I think is the BBC which is up there somewhere um, so I could be on the news later because it's you know, I'm wandering on the beach down here and the tide's coming in as usual. And before I do, thank you to the Patreon supporters for buying me that coffee down there that's keeping me very warm. And uh, Chili Vision pens are now available. Um, they are 4 99 for one uh, in the UK delivered and then not much more for a second one because the main cost is the delivery. First question today is from Matthew Scott. Is it worth getting an MSX2 over the standard MSX? I'm a bit in love with the Philips MSX2 machines with the separate keyboards, but they're quite expensive. Well, the best place to get an MSX is Dutch eBay. And uh, bide your time, because there's two ways to do it, as with always with eBay. You can either buy it now and pay a premium uh, for a, a so-called refurbished machine, usually just been shown a bit of Mr. Sheen and that's it. Or you can buy one from a user on there, which means you need to be a little bit patient, which I was, which is how I got my MSX2. Um, they're still not cheap. Um, you'll be expecting to pay £100 upwards for an MSX2. Lots of advantages over a standard MSX, including the rarity. MSXs, are standard ones, are easy to get hold of in the UK, especially the boring Sanyo ones and Toshibas. You want something a little bit different, a Sony hip bit, where you can get some of those in the UK, but Holland is still your best place. The hip bit 2s uh, and the other MSX2s from Holland are a lot more interesting. So that's where I'd go and I'd certainly recommend you bide your time because you will find something nice you just don't what need to jump in as so many people do when buying uh, 8 and 16 bits you know I know everyone's at a stage in their life where they've got a little bit more money than they used to have in the old days but on the other hand bargains are still there to be had and like anything a bit of patience and you'll find something absolutely perfect next question is from Karen do you think a small office could be on an ST and Amigas these days? They have word processing, they can print, they can fax, they have emails. They have low risk of viruses, but no real web capability though. But you could supplement them with a modern computer. Um, I don't think anyone remotely serious is going to be able to run a business on an ST or Amiga these days. You need modern things. Even if you've got an outdated version of Word these days, you're in trouble. Soon as a client send you a document. I, I'm always been tight and held onto my copies of Word for years and years and years. And the problem is you get these compatibility problems eventually where you just can't open anything. So, you know, no, I don't think you could run an office today on an ST and Amiga. I, to be honest, you've been kidding yourself back in the day trying to run an office on an ST and Amiga. You wanted a PC with a Word style or something because the uh, capabilities of the word processing software is way in advance anything on the ST and Amiga. Sorry ST and Amiga fans, but it's the truth. If you're looking to render TV graphics, you get an Amiga back in the day. If you want to do word processing and do office stuff, you get a PC. Digital Dave, which I'm sure is a made up name. I want to buy a CPC 464 like I had as a kid. eBay looks like a minefield. Where do I start to find a working machine? Well, do you want a monitor or no monitor? A no monitor means you need a PSU and an RGB SCART lead, but you've got to plug it into a modern TV. My advice is to look for local pickups if you're looking for one with a monitor. I've picked up bargains that way, although I didn't keep the monitors. I just sold them on at what they cost me because other people have the space and I don't. If you buy a 464, you're going to have to replace the tape belt, or in fact a 6128, you're going to replace the uh, floppy drive belt as well, but it's very, very easy. Don't be fooled by people who go, I've refurbished this machine. Yeah, they spent a pound on a tape belt and wiped a damp cloth over the machine. That is not refurbishing a machine. Um, the on-off switches can get grumpy. Again, refurbished systems will say, oh, it's all been fixed. The switches are good for years and years and years. The thing is, they tarnish a little bit when they haven't been used for a long time. So you just need to squirt a little bit of contact cleaner in there, give it a wiggle around, leave it a day to dry out, and bingo, you'll be fine. Fine. Uh, the machines are very robust and all three of my 464s cost under £20 and were all listed as non-tested and sold as seen. Mad Commodore has left a response to my Commodore Plus 4 uh, port roundup with 
With the exploding fist and Commodore Plus 4 only unofficial ports not to your liking then. Yeah, I'll put that, I'll make sure that's on the screen so you can vaguely understand it. Chilivision can't please everyone. There's one app a week and uh, it's advert free. Videos have to be a certain length, so you end up clicking three or four games to match what you need. There's going to be lots more. I do follow-ups. With the BBC, I've done follow-up videos um, of new games and things like that. So just because I've picked five doesn't mean I don't like the other games. It means I've just picked five and uh, on quite a tight kind of deadline as well. And do you want to end up with 37 unofficial plus four ports in one video? Perhaps Mad Commodore does. I don't. I'd rather do it split. Malicious Afterthought writes, was Old Man Afterthought correct to buy a monitor and a three and a half inch and five inch drive for his BBC Model B? Potentially three and a half inch drives will give you cheaper storage. And I don't know if there's any improved disc operating systems for the BBC, but potentially that could give you more storage. All your software came on five inch and uh, your monitor would have given you a better picture. So I think he was perfectly correct. Tane Piper writes, What's the best 8-bit machine to fry an egg on, i.e. which has the poorest heat sinks and ventilation? Ooh, well, 48K Spectrum gets quite warm, quite toasty in the top from that voltage regulator. And the 1 to 8K is that's why they have that massive heat sink on the side. That said, they seem to be fairly reliable, although I'll be replacing your uh, voltage regulators these days. Other machines that get quite warm... Oh, the Commodore Plus 4 is quite good to put heat sinks on the TED chip because uh, they're not very replaceable. They get quite warm. Amstrad machines don't get too warm. MSX machines that have power supplies in the unit get quite warm. My Hitbit 1, um, actually you can smell that when it's on, and the Hitbit 2 actually gets quite warm as well. I don't think there's any that get really, really hot though, um, unless anyone knows different. Pixel Guff writes, what are the best options for a common display for all your old computers? Is it worth getting a CRT TV monitor and a pile of adapters for each computer? This is a tricky one. It's one Chinivision has to think about. I mean, CRT monitors are fantastic, but they're really, really old now. You've got to remember that. So, you know, you prepare to put up with failures. If it breaks, can you get it replaced? Not sure necessarily. So, and the, the other problem is, of course, with modern displays you don't always have a scart socket anywhere either so how are you going to plug these machines in but i'd say get a nice modern tv and get one of those xrgb minis if you've got the time which will convert all your old school signals into something a, a modern tv that doesn't have scart can understand it's a nice simple way of doing it then all you've got to worry about is getting your computer adapter to scart and then plug it into your xrgb mini and then that'll squirt it into the tv and give you a nice picture but i appreciate that's expensive it's so expensive that chinivision doesn't have one as yet i, I do my stuff by other means but i had to bite the bullet at some stage turbo steve writes help i need the transfer roller or just tie off my 464 deck and google is getting me nowhere any suggestions well original parts are going to be hard to come by there's no spare supply or anything like that but all is not lost. Apparently, the Commodore C2N units are quite good for getting spares from for CPC 464 decks, especially the pinch rollers and capstans and things. Apparently, with some revisions, work quite well. Other 1980s tape decks can also um, be used to get bits out of. What you've got to be careful of is modern decks and modern parts, because as with that um, cheap deck I got earlier in the year from Asda, works fine but all the parts inside are tiny 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 the pinch roller and all the rollers inside are much smaller than back in the day so i'd say your best bet is to go to your second hand shop your car boot buy a few decks and see where you end up or get a breaker 464. zoe kirk robinson writes why didn't amstrad make the plus range 16 bit I think the plus range was really a stopgap. Amstrad thought the future was PCs, and that was quite correct. Also, they had a lot of other stuff going on at the time. I think CPC was kind of an afterthought. Also, you've got to remember what Alan Sugar said at the launch of the plus machines. It doesn't matter what the processor is. It just matters what the end result is. And, of course, all Amstrad's profits are on the PCW and the PCs 
anyway. The CPC was a cheap games machine just to get a few more years of sales out of it. I don't think there was any great plan other than let's get a couple of more Christmases out of the CPC. Amstrad were quite, um, quite cold and hard about these things, you have to remember. Duncan Ward writes, I was amazed the first time I saw Invader Load on the C64, where you can play a simple Space Invaders game while the game is loading. Is there anything special about the C64 that allows this? Could other 8-bit machines do this with clever programming? Right, well thanks to Jason Kelk who helped me out with this question. Loading from cassette on most machines uses all the CPU time, because it's got to pull the cassette input and convert that data using the CPU. Um, the C64 has a loader that can run via interrupt and it can trigger as each bit of data arrives. The same way the Spectrum isn't supposed to be able to play music and play a game at the same time, but can using interrupts, the C64 can also do this. So it runs the game code during the gaps where the CPU isn't actually doing anything. It's quite clever. On the CPC though, there are some games that have music during loading and these include Bomb Scare, Booty, uh, the comic game Druid, Harvey Headbanger, Heli Chopper, Rasputin, Runestone Thrust and Spiky Harold. And yes, I think most, if not all of those games are Firebird games. Question from Chinny has lost my name because he's an idiot. In a post-SCART world, how are we going to play on our old micros? And I think this refers to the fact that SCART isn't exactly common anymore on new TVs. You can get little adapters that plug into special sockets on the back, but some TVs don't have even that anymore. So we've got several options. We've got the cheap adapters from eBay, which I've tried out and um, they were pretty laughable. Um, over sharpened, over saturated images with um, a lot of latency on their delay. Um, that wasn't very impressive at all. And um, there's several variants. Some people swear by them. Um, I, I tend to swear at them. I've not found one that's particularly good so far. The other option is an XRGB Mini, um, which is a really good thing to have, but it's pricey. You order it in from Japan, and uh, that will give you wonderful picture quality. You could use a device to use a pass-through. Uh, see how Chinivision does some of its capture. You could use a, a good quality DVD recorder from the likes of Pioneer, use the SCART socket on that, and then use the component or the HDMI out. Oh, that works well. Uh, latency is an issue, as you'll see when I play games. Uh, plus, I play with the capture, of course, as well, which has even more latency on there. Um, CRTs are very good, but at the age of them, the size, the lack of flexibility of refresh rates, and, of course, the magic smoke escaping from them, the lack of a good TV repairman being available these days. Mr. PSB writes, when will you be covering the Nintendo Entertainment System? Well, Mr. PSB, this isn't really a technical question, but I'll attempt to answer it. I'll be covering it after I've started covering the Dragon, the Oric, the Computer Lynx, ZX81, Memotech, Biffo781, Jupiter Race, the Flat Top 5000, the Cray XMP, and the Intercity 125. And when we've covered all those, uh, I'll think about doing the NES. In response to my Spectrum uh, refurbishing video, Tarstar Kuzza says, There is absolutely no reason to recap a vintage computer. They are all from the 80s and newer, and unless a cap has failed, there is no reason whatsoever to replace them. Using this same logic, why stop at caps? The memory could fail in the future too. You should really replace that as well. Right. Ideally, you should leave these things in situ, but capacitors lose performance before they fail and over time, and some of the quality of some of the caps used originally weren't that good. You won't necessarily see them fail. They're not going to necessarily let out the magic smoke. They could be leaking rubbish all over your main board. In fact, when we recap the Chini Vision Amiga 1200, and I was watching Rod Hull do this, the caps looked absolutely fine from the top. Once we'd actually got them off, it was pretty clear underneath they'd started to go and were leaking rubbish all over the board. And what's more, replacing them improved an audio issue I'd had for years and years and years. The, the A1200 simply got vastly improved, clearer audio. So, you know, that's good enough reason for me to recap my precious Amiga 1200. 
Some machines like the CPC don't seem to need so much attention, but others do. People saying statements such as no reason to recap a vintage computer aren't being helpful at all. And as for saying if you replace caps, you should replace the memory, I mean, come on, please. A failing power rail as a result of capacitors or even the voltage regulators going will damage or destroy your RAM. But if RAM fails, well, that's not going to cause any more damage potentially. You can get very hot, but it won't cause any more damage, providing your voltages are fine. So it's a case of doing what's appropriate for your situation, but just saying don't do it, I'm afraid you're wrong. Kern says, I find the Electron to be underpowered, slow and weaker than the other machines of the same period and price packet, and it seems to have no standout games. Can you change my mind on this? The problem is that every game on the Electron pretty much works on the BBC. So you can just buy BBC instead and that won't really please many Elk fans. But you know, the Elk is just a cut down BBC. That said, games that have really impressed me on the Electron include Boulder Dash, Beachhead, Palace of Magic, Pipe Mania, and I'd better mention Repton as well, because some people seem to like that. Um, I don't, but each to their own. So thank you for joining me on this beach to answer your technical questions. Hope that's helped some people. If you've got a technical question, pop it in the comments below. Go to tunivision.com, use the contact uh, details there, or message me on Twitter via DM, or just send me a question on there, and I'll do my best to help you. And finally, if you like me doing this kind of video, please hit like and hit the subscribe button and notify as well so you get the latest videos on Chinivision. Remember, there's Chinivision 2, and if you don't like me doing these kind of videos and just want me to do games reviews all the time, tough. It's my channel. I get bored. Hit down vote all you like. I'm going to do more of these anyway. Well, here comes the sea. Ta-ra!